As far as great thinkers and writers, who do you think have spent the most time as far as going into that infinite loop of the rabbit hole psychology? Do we want to like refer to Philip K. Dick to like I try mean, to figure out it just can't rack in his brain trying to figure out the right what is the truth there or the yeah. you know there there was that I mean Phil is so important actually um, in terms of uh, his ability to predict where the 20th and 21st century was going mm. in terms of like the nightmare plastic paranoid hyperspace uh, surveillance state thing like he was really good at it's actually being yes. prophetic with his uh, yeah work. yeah he was really slick he was mm. really slick in that um i think he was some people think he had some kind of disease which would explain um why he did so much writing and had like these kind of weird verbal trips i forgot the name like of the, the exegesis though, like the yeah yeah right his exegesis yeah that yeah. huge weird uh, thing he came up with uh, his theology uh yeah we're trying to him. explain about what happened to him with the march 374 laser pink laser beam uh, right right uh, and he knew his kids had the hernia yeah when he f uh, found out what kind of condition he had actually or, yeah uh, i think that uh, i mean and then at the end of his life you know uh there's a great clip of Phil at the uh, what is it at some convention of science fiction writing and fiction in I mean, France. like in France or something. Yeah, and yeah. he comes right out and he says the universe is a computer simulation. And um, I mean, I think in terms of uh, I mean, in terms of being like a prophetic uh, critic of uh, human culture and and being or Western culture, particularly American society. Yep, yeah, he was dead on. He was really great. He did. I, you know, I wish he stuck around. I mean. He really couldn't stick around because he did a lot of drugs. Yeah. He was really paranoid. Um, he had a really hard time taking care of himself as an adult man. Mm. <laughs> and, and you know, his it's it's not surprised he didn't live as long as he could have. Yeah. You know, when he was just starting to get his success, it's kind of like H.P. Lovecraft yeah. that way. That they both. Or was he like really forty? Great. Was it late thirties or he was forty? Uh, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft of his, I think he was in his 40s, but I think Dick was in, I think he was only like 52 or he something. He was in his 50s, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but he was like still like a young guy. Yeah, he was prolific as far as his writing, like you said. He was kept, you know, writing I mean, these books out. That's because he was on speed every night, you know. Yeah. Why, why <laughs> right. talk about it? There's mm -hmm. a great documentary where they interview like four out of his five wives or five out of his six wives, I forgot mm, what the number okay, is. Right. And they all talk about like, well, you know, I mean, I really, I just really, really love Phil, but like, you know, he was just up all night on speed writing all the time. And like, just, naturally, our relationship suffered from that. Who would guess? <laughs> so <laughs> obsessive and manic and just all. Yeah. I mean, he was like, he was, he was definitely obsessive and definitely manic depressive. Hmm. But, um, you know, if, if you can't, uh, that's the thing about being a genius. I guess, you know, yeah, I would say Philip K. Dick is probably an artistic genius. Yeah, that's not bad. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, that seems about right. I love Ballas. I think Ballas is such a great book. Um, Ballas, I think, is one of the funniest. Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch and the yeah, dude. I mean, Ubik, that's Ubik, good. the anti telepath and the telepath yeah. and blocking your telepath and stuff. Or even just uh, Android's Dream. I yeah, mean, you know, it's was. all so much better than a lot of science fiction. Um, but uh, you know, if you can't, uh, that's the thing is that like. If you're going to go into hyper, this is, I guess, this is a good thing probably to, like, kind of close out on. I yeah, let's get like, like, concluding remarks yeah. as far as the labyrinths of perception. Sure. If, it's really important to keep um, exploring that, like, perception and weird ideas I, I and pushing the boundary of the imagination. Ah, uh, previous because, guest, Mitch Horowitz, we call it yeah. sustaining the question. Oh well. Or what do you think? Yeah, that, no, that but, oh no. <laughs> no. I mean, I I said oh because he does a lot of new thought, and I'm actually really influenced by new thought work as well. So it's ah. like oh well, you know, he likes to call it the question. I would probably call it. I'd probably be more. Um, I mean, personally, I would be like more like no, not the question, the interest. Just keep the interest. Like you don't mm, sustain the interest. The Just okay. keep the interest going. But the um, oh, that's kind of kind of goes with what you were saying. You're like you're not really worried about the messages. You're like you know seeing what it does there. Yeah, yeah. Just just keep huh. the interest up. If you keep huh. the curiosity going, the curiosity. Um, yeah, because uh, uh, or just the the power, the mental energy that goes into having. And I think that's why you keep going with the rabbit hole psychology. You have to have curiosity in order to investigate with the rabbit hole psychology. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely, one hundred percent. But the thing that it brings to mind is that like. 
this is the important thing is this is that like we definitely need more people out there um you know like uh, peter stotish he does the um he does uh, how psychedelic substances influence western philosophy hmm. that's, that's great no one's done it yet and it's like totally necessary so that's great so he's doing that kind of work right there um terence mckenna was so great at pushing his mind and trying to get new and interesting ideas out there you know i mean you know i'm uh, in, injecting the novelty yeah injecting the novelty into the dialogue so bringing new weird ideas into the dialogue is so necessary and we need it now more than ever but the thing of it is is that this is that like you've got to find out a way to keep your head above the water because if you don't you become a tragic hero mm. and being a tragic you know uh, if you're dealing with the psychedelic you're already gonna experience a level of alienation for sure but um because you're getting outside of you know hyper reality yeah. but the thing is is like if you don't um if you don't have some kind of grounding and i don't mean like you know give up to really hey hey you know what not but i'm saying like if, if you mean if like you shine on hard, you crazy diamond yeah, I know. I mean, if you yeah. go too far, you become Philip K. Dick, and you know Philip K. Dick or Sid, Sid Barrett, Rocky Erickson. Right, right, yeah. right. Like, if you succumb, don't succumb to paranoia. That's really my big thing. Is that there's mm. like, don't succumb to despair or paranoia. I always try and keep it amusing. If you just try and keep it interesting and amusing, and try not, because you know, eventually you you get up to the limits of the human mind, mm. and they can be like. You know, very disturbing. What is it like? Crowley calls it Kronzon and crossing the abyss and all those. Ah, yeah, uh, the crossing you know, of the like, abyss. You yeah, know, it's like where right. your core. You know, I think. I mean, honestly, I feel like you know, Lovecraft. Dark it. Night of the Soul. Right, with the Cthulhu. You know, yeah. I mean, what's great about the Call of Cthulhu is it opens up with that line. Um, I think the most merciful thing in the world is that you can't access all the mind at once because mm. if you did. It would drive you crazy, which was all of Lovecraft stuff. So the thing is, if you're doing the rabbit hole and you're doing psychedelics or you're doing like hyper reality, virtual reality, and you're trying to see outside of, um, you know, just con the consensus, um, it's not don't go too far. It's don't get too lost. <laughs> don't get too far. It's not don't get too far. It's, it's don't, don't get, get too, too lost. Uh, don't get too lost. <laughs> I like that kind of reminds me of. Uh, I like that because it it uh, makes me think about uh, um, the only ones that uh, know where the edge is are the ones who have gone <laughs> over. I know, and that's right. me. I mean, my my Gonzo uh, hero there. <laughs> 